Well, happy Thursday morning, everybody. Pastor Steve, thank you so much for joining me for today's devotion. We are in Psalm 30, Psalm 30, and I hope you've already uh, read the, this psalm. And I really want to do two things. I want to speak briefly, um, I guess in a teaching manner, and then secondly, in a devotional manner. And the teaching manner concerns what we call progressive revelation, progressive revelation. Um, progressive revelation is the idea that God did not reveal everything um, at one time and that over the centuries, God revealed more of his truth to his people. And uh, so that today, having both the Old and New Testaments, we know more than many in the Old Testament knew. Progressive revelation. Here's an example of it in Psalm 30. Look with me at uh, verse 3. O Lord, you have brought up my soul from Sheol. And when you and I hear the word soul, we automatically think of the soul. But and it, and it is that. But this word in the Hebrew and the Old Testament can also simply refer to your life. Okay? Your life. And so like when an airplane crashes, they talk about how many souls were on board. Your life. Uh, so verse 3, you brought up my soul from Sheol. You have kept me alive that I would not go down to the pit. The pit is another way of referring to the grave. And Sheol, the uh, Hebrew equivalent of what we have in the New Testament as the Greek word Hades, Sheol is the realm of the dead. It's this, uh, this sense that there's a shadowy existence after this life, and they did not always make a distinction between the existence of those who love God and did not love God in the Old Testament. Uh, Sheol can sometimes refer specifically to the grave, but sometimes it can refer to that shadowy existence. They knew there was life afterward. Some places in the Old Testament knew more than this, but obviously the the writer of Psalm 30 only knew about that when you die, you go to this Sheol, this realm of the dead, the next life. He doesn't talk about heaven or hell here. It's as though you're in that, that realm of the dead, whatever that looks like. And when you drop down to verse uh, 9, what profit is there in my blood? And remember, the Bible makes it clear, and we know this also medically, that life is in the blood. If you bleed out, you die. And so he says in verse 9, what profit is there in my blood if I go down to the pit, if I go down to the grave? In other words, my life can't do any good for anyone if I'm in the grave. He goes on in verse 9, will the dust praise you? Will it declare your faithfulness, referring to God? He's saying, God, if my body is buried and decays, okay, my, my blood, I, I die and I'm buried, and my body, the Old Testament makes clear, returns to dust. And we know that's true. When you die, your body decays, okay, and returns to dust. He says, well, God, that, that deceased body can't praise you. And it is... Part of what he's doing this summer is God keep me alive so I can I can continue to praise you because if I'm just you know decayed I, I can't praise you. The point I want to make as I talk about progressive revelation is that obviously the author of Psalm 30, whether it was David or someone else, did not know as much about the afterlife as you and I know because we have more revelation, more revelation in the Old Testament. Obviously, the teaching of Jesus in the New Testament. So we know that uh, that in the realm of the dead, so you have the story in Luke 16 and the Greek word Hades, which is similar to the, Greek, the Hebrew word Sheol, the realm of the dead. And just like Sheol could sometimes refer to the grave itself or the overall realm of the dead where all the dead go, Hades could refer to the realm of the dead where everybody goes or just to the hell part of it. So you get to Luke 16, the story of the rich man and Lazarus. He died in Hades is that realm where both of them are. But there's a distinction. Not everybody in the realm of the dead is in the same place. Some are in Abraham's bosom, i.e. heaven. Others are in Hades, i.e. hell. And so the realm of the dead is where all go. It's the next life. But because of what we have uh, in the New Testament and even parts of the Old, we know more about it. So progressive revelation is all right. So you read something somewhere in the Old Testament, and it's and it might seem to contradict the New Testament. No, it's not a contradiction. You have to understand the total picture. They just got God had simply not revealed to them everything yet. 
He revealed more and more of his truth as time passed over the centuries to additional prophets, and we are the beneficiaries of that. So we know more about the afterlife than King David did. How about that? That's all progressive revelation is. I want you to be aware of that. So when you read things like like some of the couple of the verses we looked at here in Psalm 30, you, you won't start thinking, well, is that a, that that doesn't make that doesn't agree with the New Testament? There's a contradiction. No, it's that. This Old Testament passage is only talking about part of what we know from the New Testament because God had not revealed it all to them yet. Progressive revelation. I hope that makes sense and helps you some. Now, real quick as I wrap this up, there is a devotional thought. One verse in here that is so encouraging. Verse 5. For he is talking about God. His anger is but for a moment. His favor is for a lifetime. Aren't you glad God doesn't stay mad at you? You know, when you say, I'm sorry, I was wrong, you repent, God doesn't stay mad. His favor outlasts his anger. I am so grateful for that. And then also in verse 5, weeping may last for the night, but a shout, a shout of joy comes in the morning. You know, a saying that a lot of people like is, this too shall pass. Well, it will. And, and, and there will be better days ahead. And, and, and actually, as followers of Jesus, we have an eternity of better days. Aren't you thankful for that? Hey, that's the good news. Hope that helps you some and encourages you a little bit too. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you.